My name is Scott Marlowe with the Rural Advancement Foundation International. Here in North Carolina, we're trying to figure out how we're going to handle hydraulic fracturing and, and shale gas exploration. And this is one of our videos talking about the issues involved in that debate. You know, one of the phrases that we've heard the most often in this conversation is the phrase that we're going to be the ones who get it right, that North Carolina is going to do it right. But what's important is that we all come to, come to an understanding of what get it right means. One of the issues, and one of the most important issues, that we need to get right is the issue of forced pooling. Now, in order for us to really be clear about what forced pooling is and how it plays out for our state, we really need to understand where it comes from, what the concepts are that created forced pooling, and then how it plays out in shale gas extraction. So, let's take a location. And, and here there's a community. And underneath this community, there's a resource. Well, it's a, let's say it could be water, it could be oil, it could be natural gas. But this resource is in a big reservoir. It's free moving down here. And uh, in this case, let's say it's oil. Well, we got Al and Betty and Charlie and Diane. Let's say Betty is out one day shooting at some food and up from the ground comes a bubbling crude and Betty discovers that they're sitting on oil. So she puts a well in the backyard. Well, whatever comes out of that well, that belongs to Betty. No matter where in this reservoir it comes from. And that's a legal concept called the rule of capture. Whoever puts their straw in, whatever comes out of that straw is theirs. Well now Charlie and Diane, they find out about this too, so they have an option they can put in their own straws. But that gets kind of messy and everybody's drawn from the same reservoir and, and, and also it has a really a, a fairly large environmental impact. So instead of doing that, What Charlie and Diane are going to do is they're going to come over here and talk to Betty because she's already got a well going. And they're going to say, we're going to help offset the cost of that well. So we will contribute money to here and we'll share what comes out of it. And this is called pooling. And now everyone's happy. There's less environmental impact. They're all getting the resource and they're sharing the cost. Oh, except for Al over here. Let's say Al's asleep, or Al doesn't talk to his neighbors, or Al doesn't know what's going on, or Al doesn't just, just doesn't like to work with people. For whatever reason, Al over here doesn't want to be a part of the pool. But the point here is that Betty and Charlie and Diane can't take their resource out of this pool without also taking Al's. There's no way for them to just take one without taking the other. They're not going after it. It's coming to them. So even though Al, maybe he doesn't want to do this because he doesn't think that the price is right yet, and if he waits a few years, the price will be better, but he doesn't really have that option because if he tries to wait, because Betty, Charlie, and Diane are pulling theirs out, he's going to lose his. And what we've said over time is it's not fair for somebody who owns part of a resource to lose it just because that they're not in the pool. And so what we've created is a situation that draws Al into the pool, whether he likes it or not, for his own good. And that is called forced pooling. So forced pooling was created to protect the rights of landowners who might lose a resource that they otherwise would want to take advantage of. But this is a very different situation than the situation that we have in North Carolina. In our case, it's not a big reservoir. That resource is trapped in the rock. That's why it's called shale gas. It's trapped in a particular type of shale. So now, 
when Betty sticks in her straw, instead of pulling from the whole resource, what Betty gets is this little bit here. Well, that doesn't work. So Betty goes back and takes, in order to break up this rock and release the gas, a liquid is pumped down in. And that liquid, under very high pressure, is used to crack this rock, to break it up. And now, instead of just pulling from there, Betty's pulling from here. And because it is a liquid being used to break up, it is called hydraulic fracturing. So not only, does this, not only does this go straight down, but Betty can also run a horizontal line. So now she's able to break up the rock all through here and release that gas. So now, when Charlie and Diane want to pull, what they basically say is, let us simply run this line on a cross, and we'll draw all of this in. And and that's, very, that's much more efficient for them. They can give money into the cost here. They get money back. And it draws from all across the resource. But now notice the resource is not coming to the well. The well is going to the resource. Now let's talk about Al. Instead of the fact that Al would, instead of it being that Al would lose his resource, that resource is no longer that mobile. And sure, there is some movement in the rock when, when fracking takes place. There's some movement from outside of the frack zone. But, you know, if there was that much movement, you wouldn't need fracking in, to begin with. If it, there was a lot of movement, you wouldn't need to break up the rock to begin with. So now the question is a very different one. It's not about Al losing a resource that he might not know about. It's not about Al losing a resource that he might want to wait for. It is the fact that Betty and Charlie and Diane recognize that it is more cost efficient with one well to cover more territory, so it would help the efficiency and the cost to be able to run that other line out this way. And that's really what we're talking about in terms of this type of a resource and the shale gas that we've got here in North Carolina. Well, there's another issue here. Now let's pretend for a moment that instead of Al, let's say it's Charlie who doesn't want to sell his. So he says, no. You cannot run this line across my property. Well, now Diane is out here, and she's got Charlie in between. She, Diane wants to join with Betty and Al in a pool. But in order for Diane to join, she's got to bring Charlie in as well. Now, Diane could put in a well of her own, but that's not cost efficient. There might be people or something else on the other side, but that may not work either. But here we have, in order for Diane to sell her gas, Charlie, it's not just that they have to get access across the land, but Charlie has to sell his gas too. So the question that we're really wrestling with is, what is the role of government in this? Should the government come in and compel Charlie to sell his gas so that Diane can sell hers? or even so that Diane and Betty and Al can sell all of theirs. Because we have to acknowledge that if you don't have the cost effectiveness of the, other, the entire pool, it may, not be cost effective. it may not be cost effective to extract. And that doesn't mean that they lose it, they just lose it at that time and at that price point. Now different states have done different things with this. Some states have said, no, it's not okay. Some states have said, well, there are very specific situations in which Charlie can be compelled into this pool. Um, in some cases, it's specific rock strata. In some cases, it's specific geographic locations. They also say, well, you know, there has to be a certain percentage of this, of this resource that is already being spoken for before you can compel the rest. And that's one of the, the critical issues. But why should Charlie lose the right to determine what happens with his land and be forced to cover the cost as well as the getting the return for the extraction from the others so that this can, they can be 
their, their resource can be extracted in a cost-effective way. And that's what we're really boiling down to here, is should the government compel someone to sell something that they don't want to sell so that others can sell theirs in a more cost-effective way? Thanks.